Welcome to Electrified, it's your host Dylan Loomis. So first up today, just a quick question to everybody that's had the chance to try it. Do you agree with Tech AU when it comes to the new Tesla Energy app? Is it accurate? Does it seem to be useful? Would love to know your thoughts. Next up, I just wanna highlight two things from this recent Financial Times interview with Elon Musk. First, the reporter said, full disclosure, until my family rebelled against me and bought a Tesla Model 3 and I started driving it, I was convinced the company would go bankrupt. Again, butts in seats, we know what happens. More importantly, when it comes to how Tesla is doing with its original mission, Elon had this to say, Tesla may have accelerated the advent of sustainable energy by 10, maybe even 20 years. And if you look around at all, it really seems like we're just getting warmed up. The rest of the interview was non-Tesla stuff, but it will be linked below. Next up, yesterday on Twitter, Chris Zhang tweeted this image of a Model S Plaid in China without any of the ultrasonic sensors, but there wasn't any news to go with it, and today we get the news. I should note, in case you saw that tweet, he said that this car was from China, kind of implying it was built there. It was not, it was imported from Fremont, the only place where Tesla makes the Model S and X. This news coming from the Ministry of Industry and IT. Sawyer translated the image for us, and we have a list of new energy vehicle models exempted from the vehicle purchase tax. In slots two through five, we have cars from Tesla Motors, and we have two variants of the Model X and two of the Model S. And breaking news here, if you look at the top one, the Model X P2P, presumably the Plaid, and you go over, now this is in collaboration with the BMW i7. Nah, of course it's not actually, that's just an image translate issue. Given that problem, I don't want to dive into any of these numbers to try to find out new information. We'll just wait for the official numbers. Again, I didn't want to do too much of what Kelvin Yang was doing here without being able to trust these numbers fully. However, if the numbers are accurate, the BMW i7's 105 kilowatt hour battery weighs 684 kilograms. Tesla's 100 kilowatt hour battery weighs 560. So the Model S and X finally going global again, both to Europe and to mainland China. If you look at the China configurator, this is what it says for the Model X. Prices and specs will be announced closer to delivery, at which point you'll be notified to select your order. Until then, your order will be considered a pre-sale order and you can cancel at any time for a full refund. Next up, I think most of you know where I stand when it comes to Tesla's demand right now, but this article came out today and I just wanna highlight a few of the angles that I think may be going overlooked. I think too many people have slipped into rooting for these massive order backlogs, and while I get it, this actually leads to a significant number of buyers buying a non-Tesla because they don't want to wait. And we also have to remember, reduced wait times will also actually increase the demand because like I said, some people don't want to wait or they can't wait six months to get a new car. For example, one of my best friends bought an ICE SUV instead of a Tesla earlier this year solely for the fact he didn't want to wait six plus months for a Model Y. And don't forget, Tesla is still not even selling the Model 3 long range, a higher volume vehicle for Tesla. And of course, we know Tesla's production is steadily increasing as well. But one other thing to note, now a lot of people are saying, well, everybody's just gonna start waiting and postponing their deliveries to next year for the new EV tax credit in the States. Two things on that. First, I'd say, okay, demand in Q1 2023 is going to be awesome. And two, not everyone is going to qualify for the tax credit due to the income limits. So I don't know what percentage of Tesla buyers make over 150,000 AGI as singles or 300,000 married filing jointly, but I can tell you it's not zero. And as I've said, Tesla lowering prices is a good thing. It'll increase demand whenever Tesla decides that it needs it. And lastly, don't forget, cars are becoming a bit more expensive right now with higher interest rates. At the beginning of the year, a five-year new car loan averaged 3.9%, and today it's around 5.1%, and presumably still on the way up. Question. If you could spend less than $3 a month to make sure that all of your personal information online is protected and private, and make sure that nobody can track your internet activity, plus many other cool features, does that seem like a good deal? It certainly was for me when I heard Matt Farrell at Undecided recommend Surfshark last year on his channel. Fast forward to today, and I'm thanking Surfshark for sponsoring today's video. 
Surfshark will encrypt all of your internet activity so no one can track or steal your data no matter where you use the internet, at home, in a coffee shop, or at the airport. With camouflage mode, not even your internet service provider can tell you're using a VPN. Surfshark itself won't even track or store what you do online, so there is no record of your activity anywhere. It has a clean web feature that allows you to surf the web in a clean cyber ocean with no ads, trackers, malware, or phishing attempts. Surfshark also allows you to connect and use all of your family's devices simultaneously with just one account. You can also change your IP address to look like it's coming from a different country so you can unlock entirely new libraries of content. You can use my code ELECTRIFIED to get 83% off and 3 extra months free. Surfshark also offers a 30 day money back guarantee so there is no risk to try it for yourself. The link is in the description below. Next up, we got the retail or domestic deliveries for Giga Shanghai in September, as well as the export numbers. So plugging in the new data for retail deliveries in September, 77.6 thousand, meaning exports were 5.5 thousand. And adding up the data for quarter three, we have a new record for retail sales of 120.5 thousand and a new record for a total 188.3 thousand. One last thing to point out, this export number, 5.5 thousand, Again, there are people out there saying, oh, Tesla had to export a bunch of cars in September, meaning the demand in China is cratering, all of these things. It's just nonsense. So if you do the math and divide this by the total number for the month of September, it's 6.6%, which if you go back to the last few third months of the quarter, as you can see in gray, the export numbers were definitely lower. But then if you come across September of last year, they had a higher number. Again, if you do the math, that was 6.8% of the total deliveries for September last year. So when it comes to Tesla's export rate for the month of September, they've absolutely exceeded that number before in September of last year. So it's not like this is the first time that's ever happened. Next up, just a quick note on Tesla's fork in the road that we saw at AI Day. The sculpture is planned for permanent installation at Tesla's Bay Area Autopilot and AI office in Palo Alto, California. Elon said it was built and paid for at my request. Hunter and team did great work, again built by Hunter Leggett Studios. Here we have just a quick look into the macro space. I just wanna share a leading indicator that most people are not aware of. I'll include a link to this data below if you wanna check it out, but it's one you should probably be aware of. You're looking at a table of the average weekly hours and overtime worked of all employees on private non-farm payrolls broken out by industry. We can actually track the differences in hours worked, and this is an advanced indicator of future economic activity. So if you wanna get a preview of the economy's direction, you can follow the changes in the average hours worked in a week. It does also correlate very closely to overall output, GDP, and changes in personal income, but more on that in the future. The way you should read it, if the number of hours worked increases for three consecutive months, it's a pretty good sign that businesses will soon accelerate hiring. On the flip side, should the number of hours worked show a prolonged decline, you can expect layoffs and cutbacks in business and consumer spending. Again, to keep this brief for today, the number of hours worked in manufacturing is one that's especially sensitive to any shift in the public's demand for goods. So for this one, when the average weekly manufacturing hours dips below 40, it's usually an indication that the economy is struggling. Whereas 40.5 hours and above suggest that business activity is fairly strong. In recent history, the average hours worked in manufacturing has ranged from a recession level of 38.5 to a robust 41 hours. Again, this information can tip off investors to the health on specific sectors in the economy. So if the average weekly hours in construction drops, it could lead to a fall in housing starts, cause higher unemployment among workers in real estate, and hurt other firms who are obviously tied to home building. So again, I just wanted to put this data on your radar. Maybe you can take a look and familiarize yourself with it a little bit. And of course, stay tuned for more. Shifting back to EVs, we have VW trying its best Tesla impersonation at its upcoming Wolfsburg plant. VW said it wants to automate 20 to 30% of its upcoming EV production at the Trinity plant. Assembly is still 90% manual work. 
The official start of production for this factory is set for 2026. You'll love this. VW's new strategy to pull this off is to use a module-based strategy, condensing 50 parts into one through techniques like die casting to produce front end, back end, and roof modules. Sounds familiar. I don't know about you, but I personally love seeing Tesla's impact all over the auto industry, the energy industry, and it's just really awesome to watch how fast Tesla really is pushing things forward all around the world. That serves as a perfect segue to this, as we have GM now creating its own version of Tesla Energy. It's actually called GM Energy, and it'll have Altium Home, think Powerwall, Altium Commercial, think Megapack, and solar panels and hydrogen fuel cells. And a GM exec said, we're getting into the entire ecosystem of energy management. And at least for the Altium home portion, sales and installations scheduled to start late 2023. GM is going to have a lot of partners in this endeavor, which I'll tell you more about in a second, but GM is going to power with sun power when it comes to solar panels. And that same exec said this, we have core competencies in vehicles and batteries in cell chemistry and scale manufacturing, Put that together with our expertise in fuel cells or dealer network, what we've been doing with OnStar and connectivity, and it seems like an obvious step for us. And CNBC is saying importantly that GM will have cloud-based software that can link these offerings with EVs and utility companies and the products, some of which will be provided by partners. GM Energy has already signed up a series of partners that will help it deliver these products and services to integrate its offerings into the grid. The question is, what really are GM's side of the offerings? And the GM executive said more partnerships will be announced soon. Two main points. First, margins in the energy business are still pretty slim. Tesla Energy was announced around 2015, so they've been working and vertically integrating for seven years now, and they still have quarters of negative profitability. Example, Tesla's most recent profitable quarter for Tesla Energy was Q2 of this year, 866 million in revenue, 769 million for the cost of those revenues, or $97 million in profit. But in Q1, those numbers were 616 million and 688 million respectively, a $72 million loss. Now, yes, a lot of that is driven by Tesla's solar roof, and I wish we had more official granular detail on other Tesla energy product margins. Either way though, the point is, we know how vertically integrated Tesla is, even on the energy side. They do have partners, especially for solar panels, but it's software like AutoBidder, PowerHub, and the microgrid controller are custom built in-house by Tesla. Maybe GM can hire some software talent and create its own software in-house, but it sounds like for now they'll be contracting this work out with partners, meaning much lower margins that are already low. From a hardware perspective, Tesla now has its own fully owned Megapack facility in Lathrop. Tesla actually has battery expertise with 4680s, Tesla's solar roof is also a custom designed product by Tesla in-house. In the long run, this will play out in improved margins, but we need economies of scale to get there. And for that, we need bottlenecks like semiconductors to subside, something that has hurt Tesla energy more than Tesla auto. So yeah, we all should have seen this one coming from GM. They have to try this. But if anyone starts to argue that GM Energy is going to be as good and as integrated as Tesla Energy out of the gate, I'd be confident in saying they are wrong. Again, I want GM to succeed, maybe just so I don't have to end up paying for its bailout in the future, but of course I do want sustainable energy. I just think it's important to highlight these differences. Moving on, we have Honda continuing to move its feet finally toward EVs. Honda and LG building a new $4.4 billion battery facility in Ohio, and separately, Honda will invest $700 million to retool several existing plans for production of EVs. Honda plans to begin production and sales of Honda EVs in North America in 2026, based on its new Honda E architecture. And when it comes to this new battery factory, they're supposed to start construction early next year, and they should be done sometime by the end of 2024, facility is around 40 miles southwest of Columbus. 
Next up, CATL is going to release its Q3 financial results on October 21st, but ahead of that, they're getting a little antsy saying they're predicting a profit jump of around 200%. Just sharing this quickly though, because I think this earnings release will be one to check out to see what's going on from a raw material standpoint when it comes to profitability for these battery makers. So it seems like this is an encouraging data point from that standpoint. Last up for today, because who doesn't love looking at this data? This is registration data from Experian through August of this year in the United States. Of course, Tesla still holds about two thirds of the overall EV market share, but honestly, it's actually really good and encouraging to see other automakers now over that 10,000 unit mark for the year. Still not really even close to Tesla's two high volume vehicles, but progress is being made. Don't forget, check out Surfshark linked below to take advantage of that deal. Hope you all have a wonderful day. Please like the video if you did and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.